Now, let me take, take a, just a few examples why it is so relevant in our country. For example, rheumatic heart disease in South Asia, if you see uh, this week's issue of uh, uh, circulation, they have said more than 3 million deaths globally and loss of 10 million disability adjusted life years occur because of rheumatic heart disease. Well, you can diagnose rheumatic heart disease very easily with echocardiography. Here is a patient with mitral stenosis. But if you take two steps backwards, patients who have even thickening of the mitral leaflets, you can diagnose. And you can save these patients just by the use of penidure injections by penicillin. Other wells as well, you can diagnose uh, mitral regurgitation very clearly. And you can diagnose aortic stenosis as one example I'm showing you. But the point is, you can diagnose tricuspid stenosis, pulmonic stenosis, aortic stenosis. All these conditions can be diagnosed by transthoracic echocardiography. And this becomes the very basis. Now, nobody will do a cardiac cath to diagnose aortic stenosis. Everything, even the placement of a trans-aortic valve replacement by a cardiologist, the TAVR, as we call it, tower, is done on the basis of a correctly done, diagnosed uh, severe valvular aortic stenosis. Here is an example of uh, mitral valve prolapse. Again, important thing we have is dilated cardiomyopathy. Young lady, she gives birth to a child, has uh, dyspnea on exertion. The obstetrician calls you just by this. You can by the by the echo. You can diagnose dilated cardiomyopathy. Heart failure again, very important. You can diagnose heart failure. You can see this ventricle is so thick, poorly contracting. Heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. Heart failure with mid-range ejection fraction are all based on 2D echo delineated ejection fraction. Whether a patient with 25% ejection fraction will he, will he or she require a, a trans a pacemaker, whether it requires an AICD, all these decisions are done, are taken on, be, on by the use of correctly applied echocardiography. So you see how much how much difference you can make to a person's life by doing echocardiography and clinical cardiology. Again, diastolic function, as I've already alluded to, is again extremely important. Patients with diabetes mellitus come to us to you with breathlessness, and you can always say, "Well, angiography is normal. Here it is. It's because of diastolic dysfunction." Longitudinal strain is again something which you can do just by 2D echocardiography at the bedside. And you can demonstrate that even though ejection fraction may be normal, uh, you can actually say if there is ventricular dysfunction because of global longitudinal strain may be decreased. This is called GLS, global longitudinal strain. Cardiac masses, you can diagnose very clearly cardiac masses uh, in the body, in, in the heart. See how clearly you can see here, good LV function and a mass going up and down. Now, many a times when the patient comes to you with chest pain, we are ready to thrombolize the patient or we are ready to take the patient into the cath lab thinking this is maybe an acute MI, but see if we had done, given heparin or aspirin to this patient, he would have been in deep trouble because here you can see a dissection flap so clearly. Of course, you, you might have to do a CT later on, but at least you've made a decision that here is dissection of aorta. Every chest pain is not an acute myocardial infarction. So the role of echocardiography in the 21st century is huge, huge. You can establish diagnosis. You can demonstrate the severity of the lesions, supposing it's a valve disease. You can define how severe the aortic stenosis is because you can get hemodynamic information what is the mean gradient? What is the peak gradient? What is the tissue? What is the VTI ratio called the dimensionless index? And that will help you in planning the course for this patient. Every patient with aortic stenosis will not, if it's not severe enough or aortic regurgitation, for example, will go for medical therapy and will come to you six months or three months. So you can plan. 
you can plan medical follow up you can plan intervention and in intervention you can plan should this patient be going for for tavr for savr or for surgeries and therefore echocardiography has helped you in overall management of the patient in our in institution almost 200 2d echocardiograms are done every day because of the volume of clinical cardiology and because it helps in in everyday day to day practice heart disease as picon said in the jack editorial is the number one cause of mortality worldwide if you look at india india has the highest rates of cardiovascular disease uh, much above cancers and other uh, chronic respiratory illnesses and worldwide 50% of all cardiovascular disease is as a result of cardiovascular disease india currently has the highest burden of acs and stemi and stemi is the common form of presentation accounting for 2/3 of patients of acute mi you can easily pick up a regional wall motion abnormality in a patient who comes to you with chest pain and you can direct the patient right for to the right place the current prevalence of cad has increased sevenfold in urban india and fourfold in rural india between 1970 and 2013 with a current prevalence of 14% in the urban and rural population so it's the burden is huge and also affects young people there are unique features of cvd in india and there are young people getting affected with it and that's the most important part 